Tesla appears to be doomed in 2021. The seeds of the company's upcoming implosion are germinating now and resurrection seems unlikely. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or you can click the card on screen now. But in today's report, I'm not gonna lie, mounting a frontal assault on the church of electric Jesus is rather uplifting. A good way to say sayonara to the worst year that I can remember. When I consider Tesla's future, I'm imbued with joie de vie. More than I should be, perhaps. I know Tesla stock is sky high, okay? Higher even than electric Jesus himself says is reasonable. But the world's leading EV kit car company is doomed, ultimately, at least that's how I see it. And here are the top reasons why. Tesla has had essentially zero competition for six or seven years now, right? Nissan Leaf doesn't count. <coughs> Box. Next year, however, 2021, just here in Shitsville, three-pronged suppository EQ whatever launches, five or six of those, Porsche Taycan, Mazda MX-30, XC40 Recharge and Polestar 2, BMW iX and iX3, Lexus UX300e, Volkswagen ID4, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia e-Niro and e-Soul. What a mouthful. These are all proper EVs from proper car makers, in addition to the ones that are on sale now, right? Meaning companies unlike Tesla, which understand actually how to make cars, right? Tesla kind of almost knows how to make cars, and they do EV tech pretty well, but the cars and the support are third rate at best. Every Tesla I've ever looked at is about as well finished as a moderate pre-production prototype, you know? Viable competition is going to be a new thing for Tesla, and certainly not a positive. You've got to remember, Tesla lacks anything really unique in terms of the underlying tech. They use the same battery tech and electric tech as everyone else. The only thing Tesla has in the domain of uniqueness is when you buy a Tesla, you're also buying, in a sense, a little piece of electric Jesus, the real world's Tony Stark. I think this is a fundamental motivator for many Tesla owners. You know, they don't necessarily want an EV. They want a Tesla because of what it says about their link to electric Jesus. But clearly, not everyone who wants an EV wants that. You know, some people just want an electric car. They don't want to sip the Kool-Aid and join the friggin' cult. You know, maybe most potential EV buyers are like this. So, in any case, there's going to be actual choice of EVs with 400 to 450 k's of range in 2021. That means proper competition. Tesla has never had to operate in a market with actual competition before, and this will place them under immense additional pressure for a change. And much positivity is made of Tesla's sales down under, right? Every time someone talks about this, it's all trumpeting. Local EV evangelists trumpet Tesla sales hit 10,000 recently. <laughs> yes. In the fine print, of course, it's a seven-year cumulative total, right? The cumulative sales from 2014 to today, 10,000. If you read this evangelist reporting, okay, it continues with statements such as this. Tesla still sits atop the throne. That's from Bridie Schmidt, who's lead reporter for The Driven, which is the sister site of Renew Economy, and she is also the co-organiser of the Northern Rivers Electric Vehicle Forum. I must confess, I don't know anything about Ms. Schmidt, but I suspect, given the niche she inhabits in the domain of reporting, she's unlikely to be all that critical of Tesla. Pro-EV reporters tend to offer exclusively pro-EV 
rhetoric. Tesla has shipped more than 10,000 electric cars to Australia since 2014 and is still selling double that of all other car makers combined in 2020, new data has revealed. Bridie Schmidt again there, which sounds friggin awesome, but just for the sake of perspective, okay? Total non-Tesla EV sales for Schittsville for the year to November, 1,589. Last year, same period, 1,432. So that's 11% up off the lowest of low bases, but hardly meteoric. Non-Tesla market share for EVs is only about two-tenths of 1% of all Schittsville new vehicle sales. Slightly less than two vehicles for every thousand sold. So, this year, according to shipping data from Vita Prime, Tesla will sell about 3,000 cars in Schittsville, and 90% of those vehicles will be Model 3s. Total EV sales here, including Tesla, is about six in every 1,000 cars. So it's kind of hard for me to see even 1% of new car sales in 2021 being battery EVs. Despite the flood of reporting rhetoric and positivity, 99 point something percent of car buyers choose conventional internal combustion cars. EVs are frankly a sideshow commercially. A good way perhaps for car makers to virtue signal while at the same time selling big fat diesel SUVs and utes, which are the most popular vehicles here in Schittsville. The South Australian government is going to legislate an EV tax, okay, allegedly to compensate for the alleged impact of those EVs, right? The revenue that those EVs are not paying as fuel excise. And New South Wales and Victoria are on the record saying words to the effect of, what an excellent idea. It's taken them a long time, I'd suggest, to axe the luxury car tax because it still exists. And let's not forget that tax was only imposed to protect the now defunct local car manufacturing industry. Just saying. Politicians are, of course, fuckwits. Around the world, EV subsidies are drying up, okay? Making electric cars less attractive to buyers by virtue of being less artificially competitive with internal combustion equivalents. This is just a fact, and hey, you don't have to like it. Next up, for Tesla, the wind has come completely out of Model S flagship sales, at least it has here in Australia. Model S hovered at about 500 units annually here in 2015 to 2017 inclusive, but they've been declining profoundly ever since, and they're looking like maybe 150 to 200 Model S sales at best this year. The long-term failure of Model S here is essentially a done deal. Its race is run, and the Model X is in the same profound state of sales decline. And this has occurred without any competition. But competition is on the way, right? Established car makers are starting to make EVs because they have to. Not necessarily because the market wants those vehicles, right? See, in markets with corporate fuel economy targets, the world's top car makers are going to make EVs and sell them, right, at a loss if necessary just to keep the regulators happy. And this means aggressive competition for Tesla and at the same time, it places upward pressure on prices for essential items like batteries. More demand equals higher input prices on the manufacturing front, right? Less profit, etc. Not that Tesla actually makes much of a profit. I actually think Tesla sells their cars at a loss anyway. And finally, there is Electric Jesus himself, right? Eventually, his credibility will crumble. It has to because of his actions. He's quite consistent, I think you'd agree. Take Autopilot, for example. If any other car maker on earth, let's just say arbitrarily Volkswagen, had beta-tested this half-baked technology on the public, there would be an outcry over those deaths, which you can search for and find. But Tesla and Electric 
Jesus appears to be Teflon when it comes to things of this nature. Reputational integrity there, like, that's frankly amazing to me. EJ has paid the US securities regulator 40 million bucks US in penalties to settle a securities fraud charge dating back to 2018. This orbited the alleged fraud that he could take the company private at 420, I think it was, US dollars per share, which he announced on Twitter on August the 7th of 2018. There appears to be no evidence for this seemingly crazy claim other than Mr. Musk not, <laughs> not particularly liking the obligations imposed upon him by virtue of the company being publicly listed. Sorry for that Tourette's then, I've been off my meds for some time now, as you can probably tell. In fact, in my estimation, the only high profile American with crazier tweets over the past four years, meaning even more seemingly divorced from reality, was dead old Donny himself. And the margin was pretty close at times between the craziness of each of their tweets. In 20, at least it was to me, in 2017, right, Elon Musk announced the Tesla semi battery powered prime mover. Very impressive, seemingly. But it's still not here, okay? Neither are the so called mega chargers, which need to supply one megawatt of electrical power in order to achieve the claimed recharging time target for that semi. Musk makes these audacious promises all the time, and then he continues not to deliver on them. Sooner or later, hopefully sooner, this process will catch up with him. Even in a world where the epistemology of reality is increasingly, let's be kind, best spoke, I would say fractured or at least under attack, the facts still matter, surely, ultimately. Several credible experts quoted in Bloomberg, etc., at the time were sceptical about the Tesla Semi's performance claims and the Carnegie Mellon College of Engineering's analysis of electric trucks dating back to about the same time suggests that the batteries will be too much of the total weight, and this increases the capital cost of the truck, to roughly double the cost of an equivalent diesel prime mover, which is kind of significant in a business as competitive as freight. So... There is, at best, at best, a huge question mark loitering over the semi. Will it happen? And if it does, how much worse than the promised performance will it actually be? Nobody yet knows. A Tesla, no doubt, will attempt to reinvent reality at that time, if it ever launches, or at least to rewrite its historical statements. EJ has also pricked teased the Cybertruck memorably in November of 2019, and the orders just flooded in. It was amazing. I'd suggest anyone else would have been laughed off the stage and crucified in the reports that followed, mainly because most eight-year-old children could have done better than that design. The Cybertruck is simply infeasible in the domain of homologation. You cannot register a Cybertruck like the one he revealed. He also hilariously claimed the windows were unbreakable. Shortly before, two of them broke during the event. That's not funny at all, so well done there. Cybertruck, as it was shown to the public, lacks windscreen wipers, side mirrors, front bumper... It has illegal lights at the front and the rear. The tyres protrude illegally beyond the body. It appears to lack crumple zones for crashworthiness. And it appears to offer poor pedestrian protection as well. And the material choice, like aerospace grade stainless steel, is frankly ridiculous. Therefore, the Cybertruck is a fantasy. Also, deafening silence on Cybertruck development ever since, except to say that... The design's not finished yet, like, no shit. And the production date of late 2021 is achievable only if the Gigafactory in Texas gets finished on time. So, I'd be leaning towards just another empty PR stunt with very little substance behind it, if any. The Tesla bubble is built on tenuous foundations such as these, and it is going to burst because it's underpinned by little more than cult 
fanaticism, unfounded belief in electric Jesus, you know, the saviour. But of what exactly? I kind of remain unsure. 2021 is going to see Tesla come up against actual competition from hardcore car makers, which it is frankly ill-equipped to endure. Tesla seems to have nothing new to deploy in the face of this real commercial assault that is already underway. You know, once this bubble bursts, and it might take until 2022, but once it bursts and all of the hot air leaks out, you've got a couple of kind of cool concepts and some relatively poorly made aging EVs with a tenuous philosophical link to electric Jesus and frankly... Not all that much else, at least not that I can see. So if you're Daimler or Volkswagen or GM or Ford, would you wait for Tesla to make like the Hindenburg and then swoop in for pennies on the dollar? Or is it just not even worth picking through the ashes when this happens? That's going to be kind of interesting to watch. Like, who would buy Tesla after this inevitable purge slash collapse? Who would want such a thing? Tesla has only one medium-term trajectory that I can see, and that is failure, which the market has not yet factored in. And I know many of you will let me have it in the comments. That's a done deal. I'm certain of this. I'm kind of looking forward to it. And many of you who are letting me have it, right, you will cite the share price, which is stratospheric, the market capitalization. You will do that as your key repudiation of my position on Tesla and electric Jesus. I would respectfully retort, dude, is that the best you've got? Markets are famous, infamous, for ignoring this kind of thing. Just look at October the 19th of 1987 and October the 6th of 2008. Rationality and analysis has very little to do with these kinds of, frankly, inevitable corrections. It's certainly been emotional watching EJ and the faithful dance in this disconnected from reality way, but at least the entertainment is not yet over, I'd suggest. It might even ramp up considerably in 2021. Here's hoping. 